guys, welcome to the video today. In today's video, we are going to be doing a review and an unboxing and check this thing all out. Check out the accessories and the attachments. This is the Dremel 4000 High Performance Rotary Tool. And you know, Dremel has done an amazing job at branding their product. Um, oftentimes you'll hear people refer to rotary tools as Dremels, you know, which speaks for itself. They've uh, you know, branded their product in a way that people will actually call the tool a Dremel tool. So um, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and see what's inside. All right, so let's get this out of the box here. They do make some variations of this kit. Um, you know, the, you can get it like this is the 38 piece, you know, 34 plus 4, the 38 piece kit. They had like a 32 piece kit. Um, and they also had a 50 piece kit which came with a flex shaft which was pretty cool you know so okay um, here we go all right that you know they provide a really nice case okay um let's go through here really quick what we got in the box so um, we got the accessory case here which a whole with a whole bunch of different accessories that we will check out and talk about we got the Dremel tool here, um, you know, it's got its power cord. Um, we got, you know, there's one of the um, attachments, another attached. So here are the four different attachments right here. Uh, we'll get these all laid out and talk about what they're for. Um, and then we got the owner's manual here. All right, guys, here are the operating and safety instructions. Uh, make sure that you read through this completely and understand it completely uh, before you use the Dremel tool. This is going to tell you everything you need to know about how to use the Dremel both safely and properly. Okay, let's start. Let's go ahead and get a closer look. I'm going to get this stuff organized. And let's get a closer look at the accessories and attachments. All right, look at all these accessories and attachments. It is awesome that Dremel gives you all this stuff in one kit. So many different things here. We're just going to work our way through these one by one. We're going to briefly talk about what they are and what Dremel says they can be used for. Then we're going to move on to the Dremel rotary tool itself. I do have some videos where I show how to use some of these accessories and attachments, and I do plan on making future videos on how to use other accessories and attachments for the Dremel. I'll link the playlist in the description below and at the end of the video. Okay, let's get a closer look at these accessories. All right, this is the carbon steel brush. This is ideal for cleaning and removing rust and corrosion from items made of brass, copper, or other soft ferrous metals. This can also be used to create an artistic effect on wood. This is the nylon bristle brush. This is ideal for general cleaning and polishing and can be used with the polishing compound. Um, this can be used for light deburring and cleaning and polishing of silverware, jewelry, and other precious metals. This is the silicone carbide grinding stone. This is ideal for sharpening, deburring, and general purpose grinding on harder materials. Designed to work well on stone, glass, ceramic, porcelain, gemstones, and non-ferrous metals. These are aluminum oxide grinding stones. These are ideal for sharpening, deburring, extended general purpose grinding on most materials, including stainless steel. And this one on the right here has like a little recessed area on the top of it. All right, the one on the bottom is called a engraving bit and the one on the top is called a carving bit. Um, and these can be used for shaping, hollowing, grooving, slotting, inlaying, and making tapered holes. And they work on wood, plastics, and soft metals. And these are what these two look like from this view here. All right, so we have some various grit sanding bands, the sanding drum mandrel, and the wrench flathead screwdriver tool. 
And working from left to right on the sanding bands, this one right here is the 60 grit with an aluminum oxide abrasive coating. The one right next to it is a 60 grit sanding band. And then the six following are either 120 grit or 240 grit sanding bands. I was supposed to get three of each, but these all look the same to me. So I think they're either one or the other. Um, and the way that these work is they just slide over the top of the uh, sanding drum mandrel here, like so. And then once you have it in place, you use the flat head part of this tool to just tighten this screw down. Just make sure your sanding band stays on there. And then once you have it tightened all the way down, the sanding band is locked in place. Um, these can be used to remove rust from metal, um, the sanding of wood, or the shaping of rubber. So they have a lot of different applications that these can be used for. All right, so we have three of the half inch felt wheels, two of the one inch felt wheels, the polishing compound, and then the mandrel that works with the felt wheels. Um, these can be used to polish ferrous metals, stones, uh, glass, and ceramics. And the way the mandrel attaches to them is on one of the sides of the felt wheel, there's an already um, you know, punched out hole there. And the mandrel, just twist into it like so. So like there's the hole. And you just twist it in until it's on there all the way and tight. And then you just wanna make sure to check that the top side of it, that the mandrel is not poking out the top of it because you don't wanna scratch whatever you're trying to polish. Um, and then if you choose, you can use it with the polishing compound there. All right, next we have the Dremel Easy Lock Cutoff Wheel. This is one and a half inch um, and the Easy Lock Mandrel. Now, when we make it to the uh, Dremel Rotary Tool, I will show you how these two attach. It's much easier to do it uh, when you have the leverage of the Rotary Tool, and I'll, I'll show you why. Um, so this can be used, this works on steel, metal pipes, or sheet metal, and it is reinforced with fiberglass. All right, so we have uh, one of the one and a quarter inch cutoff wheels and two of the 15 16 cutoff wheels and the mandrel that works with these cutoff wheels and then the wrench flathead screwdriver tool. Um, these can be used to cut bolts, screws, sheet metal, thin wood, and plastic. And the way it works is you just take the flathead screw out of the top of the mandrel and put your cutoff wheel there and then reattach and tighten down the screw on the mandrel. All right, so we got a couple sanding discs here. One is a 220 grit and one is a 240 grit. Uh, these are used for rough shaping and smoothing of wood and fiberglass and to remove rust from metal. I am missing a couple of the 180 grit sanding discs and one of the silicone carbide grinding stones that were not in the accessory kit, but I'm not worried about it. I'll contact Dremel and I'm sure that they'll take care of it. All right, so this is the cutting bit and cutting guide. I actually have a video showing you how to use these two. I'll put it in the description below and at the end of this video if you wanna check it out. The cutting bit can be used to cut wood, plastic, fiberglass, drywall, laminate, aluminum, and vinyl siding. All right, this is the straight edge guide and it does have a circle guide attachment here. I do plan to make a future video of this one, but this can be used uh, you know, with the Dremel 4000 for both routing and cutting. All right, this is the detailer's grip and this gives you a better ergonomic grip on the Dremel tool. Uh, we'll attach this one when we look at the, the Dremel 4000. All right, this is the sanding and grinding guide, and this gives you increased control during sanding and grinding applications. I do plan on making a future video demonstrating this guide. All right, so here is the Dremel 4000. Let's go ahead and give it a once over. Um, let's look at the top here. We got our on off switch. 
got a lock so you hold this down while you're you know um, loosening this and tightening this up while you put in a bit um, you got variable speed here anywhere from 5,000 to 35,000 rpms and make sure to refer to the manual uh, depending on what bit you're using and what you're working with, um, you know, it will give you the recommended RPM settings. And I like this. This is, you know, very detailed so you can set this, um, you know, at whatever RPM you need. Um, we got our, our brush spot here and on the bottom too. So, um, you know, over time, if your Dremel is making a lot of noise uh, inside or, you know, sounding uh, weird, it could be that these brushes need to be replaced. Um, you know, you got your motor vents, you know, here, uh, make sure while you're using the Dremel tool too, you don't want to cover these up. And this is how the heat escapes the, uh, motor area of the Dremel. Got a little, um, you know, like hanging thing here to hang it up. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, let's go ahead and do the, uh, attach the detailers grip, um, Whenever you're installing a bit or, you know, an attachment, always make sure your Dremel is unplugged. Um, if you have a cordless model, make sure that the battery is out. So to attach the detailer's grip, we're just going to twist this piece off here. And it just twists right off. We're going to put the detailer's grip on and it goes at the, the opposite side of your on-off switch. Um, and then here's the little uh, twist-on piece uh, for the detailer's grip and we just twist it on like so and there we go you know yeah kind of a more ergonomic way uh, to hold the Dremel so um, I like it okay let me go ahead and take the detailer's grip off and I'm going to show you guys how to um, install that easy lock cutoff wheel on the easy lock mandrel all right, so before we do this again, I just want to say anytime that you are installing or removing a bit, make sure that your Dremel is unplugged or if you have a cordless model that the battery is out of it. Um, so to do this, we are just going to hold down the lock button here and we're going to loosen this up. And then we're going to stick our easy lock mandrel in there. And you just want it down all the way and you're going to tighten it up as much as you can by hand. There it goes, and then you're gonna use, once you have it as tight as you can by hand, you just wanna use your wrench tool, uh, holding down the lock button to come in here and get it all the way tight like so. Let's make sure there. There we go. All right, so when you pull down on the mandrel, you can see there, um, you know, it creates a space. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put the cutoff wheel over that uh, cutout there, and then we're going to twist it 90 degrees so it lines up with this bottom part here. And then line up the holes of the cutoff wheel like so, and then twist it 90 degrees, and it fits onto that bottom piece, and then you can just let it up and it locks into place. So now that cutoff wheel is um, on there. So much easier than having like the old style uh, where you had to, you know, take out the screw, put your cutoff wheel on and screw it down. Uh, this easy lock system seems to be a little bit quicker uh, in order to get your cutoff wheels on and off. Um, so as long as you have a cutoff wheel that's capable, um, this easy lock system is pretty nice. And then same thing to take it off. You just pull that down, twist it 90 degrees so the a uh, hole in the cutoff wheel matches up with the um, cutout there and then it just pulls right off. All right, so I've switched out to the nylon bristle brush, brush there so we can test out the sound of the Dremel at the different RPM stages. But before we ever plug the Dremel in, we need to make sure that we know how to uh, use it both safely and properly. And that's why it's so important to read through the operating and safety instructions and understand them completely. Um, we do need to make sure that we're wearing a pair of eye goggles to protect our eyes and a respirator or good quality mask to protect our lungs. Whatever we're working on is going to generate dust and particles into the air. We do not want to breathe that in. We want to make sure that we're wearing a pair of earplugs to protect our hearing. These tools can get really loud. You don't want to have any long sleeves or dangling clothing or jewelry or anything that can get caught up in the Dremel tool. That would be really dangerous. If you have long hair, make sure it's pulled back and out of the way. 
And you always wanna know uh, where your hands are at. You don't ever want your hand in the cutting path of the Dremel. Uh, if it was to slip or something like that and go into your hand, that would be very dangerous. So both hands should always be on the Dremel while you're using it. Um, okay, let me get my safety equipment on and I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the Dremel and let's test out the sound. All right, guys, well, there you have it. There's the Dremel 4000 with all the accessories and attachments and, wow, just so many applications of what you can use all this stuff for. Whether you're into woodworking or automotive or you have a hobby, uh, cosplay or arcade, like I have old arcade cabinets and a tool like this comes in very handy for when I'm working on my old arcade cabinets. Or just if you want to have one around the house for general purpose use now and then, it has this, you know, handy storage case uh, back here to keep everything in and keep it tucked away when you're not using it. So um, I do have previous videos where I show how to use some of these accessories and attachments. Please check those out if you would like. I also plan to, in the future, do additional videos on how to use some of these accessories and attachments. So please like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate you guys, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Have a good one. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. And if you have the time, check out these other great videos.